Okay. Welcome to episode 10 of Fireside Chats with Pastor Jed and Pastor Kina. Uh, last week we talked about uh, connecting the seals and the trumpets, sort of showing you that overlapping where the wrath of God uh, really comes down. And yeah. so this week we're going to kind of pick up a little bit where we left off with episode 10, and we're going to talk about wars and rumors of wars. So why don't you kind but, of jump in and... Well, you know, finding that conjunction point between the seals and the trumpets helps us a lot in the scripture because uh, we, we talked about early on how that, that, uh, that first of all, Revelation is chronological, but it's not one chronology. It is a number of timelines that the seals have a timeline, that the trumpets have a timeline, and that the vials have a timeline. And that uh, we have to discover how they intersect okay. if they do. Right. And we have discovered thus far that, that seal number six okay. is the wrath of God. Okay. It's very plain in the, in the, right. in the scripture. And we have discovered that trumpet number seven is the wrath of God. Right. And we made mention last week that it just it's not logical to think that God is going to pour out a little wrath here and a little wrath there and here a wrath, there a wrath, there a wrath, wrath. Yeah, exactly. But so so we, we, we understand that in the description of the blowing of the trumpets that... The wrath of God is revealed, but in right. the in the breaking of the seals, the wrath is revealed. And so we and find so, yeah. that conjunction. And, and, and we know how and the line goes up. Yeah, and we know, because we talked about this last week and back towards the beginning of the series, when the seventh trumpet begins to sound, that we find this... The mystery of God is finished. The mystery of God being finished. The yes. mystery of God being the church. Being the church. And so we located where the rapture is, sort of, and yes. then we've got the sixth seal and the seventh trumpet because the seventh trumpet continues to blow and that's when you find more wrath. So, right. so and we're going to work backwards, we, right? We, well, we're gonna, yeah, we're going to kind of work both ways, but for our practical purposes tonight, we want to work backwards from that point okay. and look at the sixth trumpet. Okay. Okay. We'll now okay. I, we could go back and start at the first trumpet and then just bring them Every, up. Everybody and, does that. And try to connect it. Yes, <laughs> everybody does it that Why way. Why would we and, do it that way? And you know, if you are trying, to, <laughs> if you want to connect to this train, it makes sense just to start where you're at and add on to it. If right. you're going backwards, forward, whatever. Right. Okay. So to do that, okay, let's go to Revelation chapter nine, and. Uh, in, uh, in Revelation chapter 9, we're going to drop down to, oh, about uh, verse number 13. And it begins this way, And the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel, which had the trumpet, Loose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates. And the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year for to slay the third part of men. Now, that's a weird, that is just such a weird, very specific time. Very specific because when it says for uh, an hour and a day and a month and a year it is it is meaning a very specific point right. in time that this is what they're prepared for they've been waiting for they God has had them in place yeah. for this moment in time and then he is he's saying to loose those four angels who are which are bound in the great river Euphrates and the four angels are loosed which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year for to slay the mm. third part of men now the rest of that chapter goes on and gives us more details about this event. And what we're going to find is that this is a war. The reason I say it's a war is because there's an army. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and there's going to be a whole lot of killing. Mm -hmm. And when you talk about a third part of 
It says a third part of man, or one interpretation says a third part of mankind. Right. Well, that's a lot of people. Yes, it, it is because now, first of all, uh, different people are you know different uh, uh, teachers uh, have 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 interpreted this different ways. Some have said, well, it's talking about a third part of the men that take place in this battle. Okay. But most right. people understand that this means a third part of mankind, a right. third part of the human beings that are alive on the earth. Now, these the army kills them? A third part of man? Or the angels well, kill them? We will have to read a little further to find out just exactly how they die. One more question. Yes. Just one? Yes. Is there just one army, which would make for an awkward war, or is it the number, but that could be more than one army? Well, that is a good question, and I wish that you would start asking me questions that I know the answer to. <laughs> okay, so we, we're going to have to get in the Word. <laughs> yes, yes. All right. Now, just for practical purposes, mm -hmm. I want us to call this the Sixth Trumpet War. Okay. And the reason I say that is because if you talk to anybody just casually about the end time and a war, they will say Armageddon, Armageddon, Armageddon. Hands down. Armageddon. That's it. The war at the end time is yes. Armageddon, and there is going to right. be a war that is that is we're going to refer to as Armageddon. So they're not wrong because it's going to take place in the Valley of Megiddo. Right. Okay. Um, and, and they're not wrong about that, but, but this is another war. Right. And that so, takes place before Armageddon. Right. And, and, and we will we'll be able to show that on our timeline that, that this war, the Sixth Trumpet War, takes place before Armageddon. Okay. Okay. Um, now, just as a matter of reference, we've got two wars. Yep. Actually, there's another one. There's three wars. There's three wars because we're going to jump back in just a few minutes and look at another war uh, in, that is described in the Old Testament as an end of days war. And the question is, is this war the same as that war or is it a different war? And you see, these are the questions that have always come up about all of these wars because, uh, you know, there are some people that they... They, they they look at Revelation and and every time uh, every time it's you know a uh, a hailstorm is uh, is is mentioned uh, they think it's a different hailstorm right and sometimes God is just in 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 another timeline He is giving you another clue as to how this timeline overlaps with that timeline right so uh, so we're going to talk about three wars yes three overall. wars. The War of Gog and Magog, which is in the Old Testament yes. prophecies. The Sixth Trumpet War, which we're going to talk about tonight. And the uh, war called Armageddon. Yes. All of which are end of time wars. End, end, of, of, end of time events. And okay. we will not go into great detail about all of them tonight. But we will, we will uh, just, just kind of want people to understand that they, they exist. Right. They are going to happen. And hopefully we can put some kind of, uh, make some sense out of yeah. in, in what order it happens. Okay. okay. So, uh, so we understand that uh, the sixth, now, now we're making an assumption here. Already? Yes, because we're making the assumption that when God numbered the seals, that he numbered them in order. And when he numbered the trumpets, he numbered them in order. What if he did it like the lady that does the Powerball thing right before the news? She just picked just up, whatever and the first number like, is... We're going to be blowing that third trumpet now, thank you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we hadn't gotten to the second one yet, <laughs> we but hey, Don't worry about it. We, it'll gonna, come out of this machine it'll eventually. It'll come. Uh, hopefully that's not going to be the case. All right. Now... Uh, so are we going to just continue to read? We're going to finish gonna look, this yeah, Let's look at a few details. Why don't you read there, um, beginning in verse 16. 
All right, and the number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000 thousand, and I heard the number of them. So that would be 200 million, right? Yes. 200,000 thousand. Is 200 million. That's a lot of horsemen. And thus I saw the horses in the vision, and them that sat on them having breastplates of fire and of jacinth and brimstone, and the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions, and out of their mouths issued fire and smoke and brimstone. By these three uh, was the third part of men killed, by the fire and by the smoke and by the brimstone, which issued out of their mouths. Now, hold up right there just a minute. So, this third part of man is going to be killed by... Lion-headed horses that are spewing fire and brimstone yes. and smoke. That is the most horrifying thing. Well, it is, but it sounds like that the events of that war have gone beyond the boundaries of the battlefield. Mm. Oh, yeah, right. Okay. There's okay. definitely some collateral damage if you kill a third part of well, man. Well, may well be some kind of a nuclear thing. We don't know. Wow. We, you know. Oh, my gosh. Now, this is something that we probably need to address because um, there are people that look at the book, book, of Revelation, uh, book of Revelation as totally being figurative, that, that it, nothing it says in here is what it means. That it Meaning is, they don't think it is, it's real wars? That, that it's not real anything. That okay. it's just, uh, it's an allegory. It's, uh, it's just, uh, but, but actually when we look at what the scripture says, go back at the beginning of Revelation and God speaks to John and he says, write down the things which thou hast seen. Right the things which are yes. and the things which shall be hereafter. Now that's uh, Revelation chapter 1 verse 19. Okay. And that's kind of a key because he's telling us that I want you to write down what you see, yeah. what I show you. Right. Okay. And and so then in you know we we go through a couple of chapters of him just giving some wisdom and knowledge concerning the 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 spiritual condition of the church, and and uh, and then in the chapter four he begins to give him a vision of what shall be, be hereafter. hereafter. I got you. Now, what the book of Revelation is? It is John's written description mm -hmm. of, what, of he saw. what he saw with his eyes right. and his mind's eye. Like he's he's trying to tell you about a movie yeah. he saw, right. and then this happened, and then that happened, and yes. then this other thing happened. And Meanwhile, while that was happening, this was happening. Yes, and then he's having to do it in the terms of what he understands. What are you saying? There were no lion-headed horses that spewed fire and brimstone and smoke? <coughs> I'm not aware of it, okay? Now, I'm sure that someone along the line had gotten called, you lying head. <laughs> <laughs> my uh, mother-in-law used, yeah. used to call my father-in-law a stubborn head. Stubborn head. Yes. Stubborn head. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So you're thinking yeah. this is probably modern, a mo or maybe even more modern than what we have seen now. Right, because he's seeing this vision of something from the future, right. and he he's has no knowledge it. of... What these things right. are, okay? Yeah. And so he's trying to describe it, and when he starts talking about scorpions with stingers in their tail, uh, and you know, and 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 these uh, these uh, horses, horses with, with, the, with the face of a man, right. and and all of this, he's describing what he's seeing, and he doesn't know what an Apache helicopter is. He doesn't know what some of these these uh, military things are uh, that are flying in the air that's got stingers in their tails. Right. He's just he describing them. This is terrifying, but yeah. you know they, they are working on various and sundry AI to be utilized by police forces. And of course we know they will use them in militaries. Even if, even if they 
in the U.S. or in Western countries, they're like, well, no, that would be unethical. We have a lot of, of countries in the world that are not so ethical. Right. And they're teaching them, you know, robotics, moving parts, independently moving drones, things of that nature. And more than that, China now has been exposed as experimenting with uh, genetically enhanced human beings. You are kidding. Read it the other day about how they are genetically modifying humans to be super soldiers. Oh my, that's yeah. so creepy. Now, I don't, I haven't read anything about putting uh, scorpion tails on them or, or... Right, or lion heads on horses, but... <clears throat> right. But... Yeah. Would it, wouldn't it be bizarre if, in fact, John was not describing machinery? Well... He was describing something that actually was <coughs> a horse Woo. that had a lion's well, head yeah. and spewed fire like a dragon. Woo, that is insane. Oh, that's, yeah, that is insane. Wow. So anyway, okay. let's read some I more. really yeah. don't want to be here for this, and I'm very disturbed about the way that the Sixth Trumpet War seems <laughs> to be before the rapture. I really... <laughs> I don't well, feel well, good about this at all. Let's remind everybody that we've modified our chart just to blow it up a little bit now. Right. But we've got, and talking about the seals, we've just shown the sixth seal here as the wrath of God. Right. And we're showing, the, of the trumpets, we're just showing the seventh trumpet as the, the wrath, wrath of, of God. God. Uh, and then we are showing that just before the that, the rapture of the church takes place when the mystery of God, the church age, right. comes to conclusion. Which so we're going to get back to right. this. Which is when the minutes. seventh yes. trumpet begins to sound. When it begins to sound, yes. Which exactly. means probably not until after the sixth one has sounded. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. And that's and that's where I want to go. Okay. Uh, in, in fact, so we uh, just finished uh, verse 18. By these three was the third part of men yes. killed by the fire and by the smoke and by the brimstone which issued out of their mouths. For their power is in their mouth and in their tails. For their tails were like unto serpents and had heads and with them they do hurt. That, that their tails had heads? It's what it said. It said, for their tails were like unto serpents. And, and you wouldn't know if you were coming or going. You wouldn't. No, <laughs> you wouldn't. It'd be like cat dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the rest of men which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented, oh my God, yet repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone, and of wood, which neither can see, nor hear, nor walk, neither repented they of their murders, nor of their sorceries, nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts. Wow. The, this is the guys that were not killed by these yes, plagues. Yes, right. Yeah. That is horrifying. Yeah. Even after all of that. Exactly. Exactly. So, that is the, the sixth wow. trumpet war. Uh, and that's all the scripture really shares with us about that. Um, but uh, the, the important thing for us to remember is this third of mankind dying. Yeah. Now, um, let, me, let, let me just for just a moment, and I don't want to get hung up on this, but I want to talk about this other war that we've not given a name to yet. We'll talk about Armageddon before we get through. Uh, but this third part of mankind has triggered something in my mind. Okay. Uh, and uh, if we go back into the Old Testament, back into the book of Ezekiel, the, the, the major prophet Ezekiel. Now, what the chapter? Chapter, chapters 38 and 39 talk about the war that we, we call it the war of Gog and Magog. Right, which okay. is one of the three wars now, that we the, feel are happening right. in the end time. Now, something that we we need to understand, Ezekiel has put has, has a timeline going on too, and if you back up into Ezekiel thirty seven, you find that we, we can pinpoint exactly when that chapter takes place. Okay. Because we have those of us that's been around a while have just about lived it. Okay. And I'm going to show you why. All right. The, the, the 37th chapter of Ezekiel is 
talking about the valley of dry bones. Yes. Amen. And, uh, and, and all of you that are listening, you have heard some preacher preach about the valley of dry bones mm -hmm. and, uh, and how that, uh, uh, that God told the prophet uh, to prophesy. And, and when he began to prophesy that, that, that this bone connected to that bone and, and, and all of these just dry bones in this valley. But the, the explanation of that is found near the end of chapter 37. Uh, verse 11 says, Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried and our hope is lost. We are cut off for our parts. Therefore prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up out of your graves and shall put my spirit in you, and ye shall live, Woo. and I shall place you in your own land. Then shall you know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it, saith the Lord. Now, this was prophesied some 600 years uh, before the birth of Christ. Okay. Okay. And it's not... It was not fulfilled until 1948. Right. In 1948, the, the Jews were scattered all over the world, and beginning about the beginning of the of the 20th century, early 1900s, um, he began to draw yes. uh, the Hebrew people back to the land that would become known as. Israel right. once again in 1948 Israel became a nation again after many 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 generations right. okay it was a valley of dry bones it was the people of of God the Hebrew people were a valley of dry bones yeah. they were scattered there was no nation there was no people there was no uh, anything and then he brought them back now that is the 37th chapter of Ezekiel, and he talks about in the balance of that chapter the restoration of uh, the United Nation of Israel. And, and then, then we get to chapter 38. And chapter 38 begins with a prophecy against Gog. Okay, now okay. remind me who Gog is. Well, best we can tell. I seem to remember that Magog was thought to be Moscow. Yes, and tell you what, we don't really have time tonight okay. to go into all because it brings it brings up a list of nations that we will want to talk about in detail. Okay. Uh, but let's for for now, let me just show you a couple of things in chapter 38. Uh, uh, it does say uh, that uh, it, it begins to prophesy against Gog in the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and prophesy against him, and it goes on and on and on and on. And then it tells us a couple of things that uh, I want to point out right now. Uh, in, in verse number 15, it says, And thou shalt come from thy place out of the north parts. Okay. Now keep in mind, in biblical geography, mm -hmm. everything is pegged to Jerusalem. Jerusalem right. The so north, north parts means north of Jerusalem. Right. Amen. Wait, so, a yes. little ways north or a long ways north? Well, you don't always know. Okay. You don't always know. Something else that I want to point out is verse 16, And thou shalt come up against my people of Israel as a cloud to cover the land. It shall be in the latter days. Okay. So this is telling us 600 years before Christ that it is going to be in the latter days yeah. uh, that this is going to happen and it's going to be armies that will come down from the north. Okay. Okay. And that's all I really need to talk about right now about this except to tell you if we jump over into chapter 39 
which is a continuation of this uh, uh, admonition against Gog, says verse 1, Therefore thou son of man prophesy against Gog and say, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, O Gog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. And notice verse 2, I will turn thee back and leave but the sixth part of thee and will cause thee to come up from the north parts and will bring thee upon the mountains of Israel and I will smite thy bow out of thy left hand and will cause thine arrows to fall out of thy right hand. Now, what I want to point out to you is that in this war of Gog and Magog, <coughs> there's going to be a lot of slaughter too. Yeah. And God tells us specifically that He's only going to leave a sixth part of the army that comes against Israel He's only going to leave a sixth part of them alive. Wow. Five sixths, or five out of every six men that battle in that war against Israel, this is not on Israel's side, but this is against Israel, are going to die. Wow. Now, there are some people that want to say that the battle of Gog and Magog is the same battle as the sixth trumpet war. The sixth, uh, the sixth trumpet war specifically says that a third part of mankind is going to die. Yeah. God Last and I checked, God. now I wasn't great with my fractions, but I'm pretty sure that a third does not equal five sixths. Well, I believe that but a, third, a third of everybody is going to be a whole lot more. Than five sixths of, the of, the, of just the enemy army. Right. So we don't, but it's two different numbers. Is yes. my point. It is and that's two my different point. equations. Is yes. that even I know that, it takes <laughs> that two sixths is one third, not five. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So so this this war specifically really kind of tells you the, the damage is going to be the actual armies that come against Israel will be damaged and five sixths yeah, of them yeah. will the, be destroyed. The judgment will be against the the the, the invading army. Okay. Now um, something that I think is important for us to understand is that in Israel the the spiritual leadership of the Jewish nation by and large, are either expecting Gog and Magog to begin at any time, or a number of the chief rabbis are teaching that it has started. Meaning the conflict in Syria? Well, they're saying all of it. All of it. Wow. In fact, they're, you know, they're, 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 yes. Uh, more importantly, they are focusing on the attitude and the um, the character and the behavior of Erdogan, mm -hmm. who is now the dictator of Turkey. Turkey. Right. Okay. Erdogan. 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 Yeah. What I call him? Erdogan. But Erdogan. it's because Erdogan. that's Erdogan. Erdogan. Spelled. Erdogan. Yes, Erdogan. Erdogan of Turkey, yeah, and uh, they are convinced that he is going to be part of that invading army. And uh, I bet he would be delighted to be part of that invading well, army. You know, even now he's trying to exert more influence in Israel. Yeah, uh, he's trying to fill uh, any vacuum that he can there. So yeah. Anyway, now, uh, with all of that said, it's it is. I just want to note for our. Uh, for our audience, that the leadership, the spiritual leadership in Israel, they are Orthodox Jews, and they believe in the Old Testament prophecies. Absolutely, these are their prophets. Absolutely, and so they've been studying yes. uh, these scriptures since long before Christ. Yes, and so it's interesting that they have essentially a consensus that either it's already happening, or it's about to happen imminently. Right. But now keep in mind 
they won't give you two cents for any of that New Testament. <laughs> Correct. Right. They didn't <laughs> and, see Jesus. And, and, but yeah, that's yeah. Okay. You see, so so they're not. You know, the only war they're focusing on right. is Gog and Magog. Right. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah, the yeah, only that's one what, you know, talk about. You know, but they feel uh, fairly confident that Turkey is going to be part of it, mm -hmm. that Russia is going to be part of it, and uh, there, you know, there's a there's a list of enemies that's that's on their horizon yeah. there, and. Uh, so, uh, wow. you know, the, if you think about it, Lebanon is just north of, yeah. of, of Israel. Syria is just north of Israel. Uh, now, let me point out something else, too, about these two wars that we've talked about. That first war, that sixth trumpet war, is uh, apparently going to emanate out of the Euphrates River Valley. Which is... Well, the Euphrates River begins in Turkey. Okay. And it comes down through Syria. Right. And through Iraq. Wow. Right. And it it, it uh, goes all the way to the It goes all the way down to the uh, the Persian Gulf. Right, the Persian Gulf, okay. Yeah. And uh, and at some point in time seems to be like it it, it divides or does it no, it, it, the Tigris River and the Euphrates River, right. they, they, they run they, together. They join, to, later join on. together. So it, but it originates in Turkey. It, it originates and you said in the, Turkey. The War of Gog and Magog is supposed to originate there, or the Sixth Trumpet the War? The Sixth Trumpet War specifically says that it's the four angels in the river Euphrates, Euphrates. that are prepared for a day and a month, and a, or a, an hour and a day and a month and a year. To kill a third part of man, so 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 maybe that's why, uh, you know, eschatology uh, scholars yes. are like, if you've got the war of Gog and Magog that contains Turkey, yeah, and we already know that there's only be a sixth of the army left. It seems unlikely that 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 would that it would be a different war. That is the sixth trumpet war yeah. with two hundred million people right. to then be decimated. Yes, but I cannot I have not to this point in time been able to peg Gog and Magog to a timeline. Okay. Now let me show you why. Okay. Because the the Jewish nation are convinced that it's about to happen or is has started. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But there is a scripture. Okay. Let's go back to Revelation. All right. And uh, if we go to Revelation, uh, da, 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 let's see where how far do I want to go? I want to go all the way back to Revelation twenty. Now I don't want to confuse anybody. But so Revelation chapter 20 is after the thousand year millennial reign. Which is after okay. the wrath of God. After the wrath of God. Uh, after Armageddon. Armageddon. And, after and the millennial reign. The millennial reign is which is going to be a thousand years right. of peace during which time that Satan is going to be bound. And so then, in the year 3535... <laughs> If it's man is still, still alive, alive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. that's the one. Right. That's the one. So, so chapter twenty talks about uh, Satan being bound for a thousand years and uh, and uh, so forth and so on. And then around verse number seven, uh -huh. and when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. And shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. Good Lord. Just a little note there, just a little reference there. Wait. But the, the, that, 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 those names, Gog and Magog, are recorded there. And but so, this would make Gog and Magog... After everything. After everything. Yes, after everything, pretty much. So that's why I'm saying tonight that I cannot tell you when Gog and Magog is going to take place. Now, the Sixth Trumpet War, 
I, I could give you a little better idea about that. It's going to take place just before <laughs> the, the rapture. Just before the rapture of the church. <laughs> We're going to be here for that one, folks. Yeah. Uh, so we don't know Whoa. about Gog and Magog. Man. But okay. okay. Now, now let's 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 see. How's our time doing? Well, it looks like we're doing good. Yeah. Uh, and so uh, I, I, I want to jump to something else in this same line of thought. Before we finish because up. Because we made reference to three wars. Yeah. The last one being Armageddon. Armageddon. Right. And I want to I want to go there for just a moment, just to show you. Um, so exactly we're going to need to back up that's. from and chapter so, 20. We're going to need to back up a little earlier. We're going to back up to chapter 16. And chapter 16 is talking about the vials, uh, the seven vials. And we have not made note on our board yet about the vials. Because so, we're not done with the trumpets. Well, that's exactly right. But let me do this. Since we're here, let mm -hmm. me just point out a few things. Okay. Chapter 15 of Revelation begins this way, And I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues, for in them is filled up the wrath of God. Okay, so the seven vials are <coughs> all under the six the sixth seal and the seventh trumpet. Here. It looks like it's going to be this way. The vials, the wrath of God is, vi is vial number one, three, one seven. two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Those are the seven vials and they are filled up with the wrath of God. So We don't have to be here for that. No, okay. we're, hopefully we're going to be on this Woo! bus. Yes. Amen, amen. So it appears as though scripturally the wrath of God is the sixth seal, it is the seventh trumpet, and it is all seven of, of the, the vials. vials. Okay. Now, now, Armageddon. Well, that's the next thing. So chapter six talks in detail about the 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 the, the uh, vials, and I don't want I don't have time to do that tonight. But let me drop down here um, and just see. Uh, let's see. Da 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 da. Um, okay. Uh, and verse number sixteen of that sixteenth chapter says, "And he gathered them together into a place." called in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon, and the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air, and there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne saying, It is done. Wow. So basically, it appears as though that Armageddon is going to take place as the seventh angel pours out his seventh vial, and so on our chart, we can, if we knew how to spell it, we, <laughs> we, we, could, we could put Arma. I did. I put two G's too, but it's only just one. Oh, it's only one? Yeah. So which will well, give you space. Thank God, because I don't have room. For, Hang on. I don't have room Hang on, we have two. an eraser here. Sort of. Okay, Arma. We have a smearer. Ged. Done. Done. Right there. Arma right there. Gagan. Right wow. there. Okay. But. So. We might be here for that. Well. We might come back for it. Well, the. the but we're not going to talk really about that That's really something for another week. All yes, right. it is. So, so, so there we have it. Um, we have, we've got three wars on the charts. I will say this. We covered no rumors of wars. All of it was just wars. <laughs> <laughs> well, but there, some of those were rumors. Because okay. we, we well, don't know, we when, don't know. <laughs> when Gog and Magog are going to take place. Right. We, we've heard it one way, but it might be another that, way. Yeah, and, that's right. We've heard rumors that it's yes. happening right now. That's exactly All right. right. Well, That's this has exactly been right. well, really, really interesting. Um, and I hope that you have found it so as well. Thank you for joining us tonight. Um, 
Hope that you will come back and be with us next Sunday night for uh, episode 11. And we will continue uh, talking about the trumpets, right? It's entirely possible. <laughs> <laughs> we will see you then. God bless.